And I believe we are live. I'm always surprised. I act surprised when we go live and I do this every single week. Hi, Kate. Uh, you're like, it works. <laughs> it works. Who knew? Who knew this technology? Yay! <laughs> technology would work. So welcome to Taya Talk. I am here with Kate Trotter, current Taya boot camper. Uh, and we are going to just talk about some of the Taya tools. Uh, we're doing this show every week now at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, wherever you're watching us is where we are. And uh, I'm going to have boot campers. I'm going to have base campers, which are boot camp graduates. I'm going to have Taya mastery people uh, and people that may, that are in the Taya uh, practice Facebook group, but aren't yet or not in boot camp. I should say not yet. I should make assumptions about people. <laughs> um, but everybody that's a Taya practitioner, you know, I, I want to talk to everyone about where they are in their Taya practice and the tools and the thing that I want to start off with you and we can go anywhere you want to go, Kate, is I know this was a big one for you in boot camp, yeah. detuning fear. Yeah, that's why I came to boot camp. <laughs> yeah. So I I mean fear is like it's you know one of those emotions where when you're living in it, fear and anxiety, it's all consuming, you know, and it's really hard to be in any other headspace, even when you should be experiencing something um, joyful or happy. Like if you're somebody that struggles with fear, um, and in my case, it was from traumas. Uh, it, it's just like it's an umbrella that like blocks that sunlight from you until you learn how to put it aside. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you've done a lot of work in a short amount of time. Actually, it's funny because people get into to boot camp and, you know, gosh, I'm still challenged with this and I'm on week two. <laughs> and it's so funny. Like you're, you're changing a lifetime belief system in a matter of weeks. And I, I see miraculous things happen. But, you know, we have to and I, I'm as impatient as anybody. So I laugh at myself as much as I laugh at that. But you're you're pretty far along at this point, are you? You're about at least six, seven weeks in. You know, it's funny because I look at like the module numbers and I'm tried not to look at how many weeks along because it, it the weeks are, as you know, like a guideline of a pace. Um, and so I'm at module 14. Which I don't know where that exactly lands. Well, right? there are 17 modules, so you're really far along. Oh, wow. <laughs> So I'm like right there flirting with the end. And just you're closer <laughs> to the edge than you realize. It's time to jump off. Uh, so let's talk about your, your detuning fear journey a little bit and just kind of share with us how that's okay. whatever you want to share about how that's worked for you. Yeah. So, um, I'm somebody that I, I experienced trauma really, really young in life and with death. And then again, later in life, and you know, everybody throughout life that it's an ever present, it's an ever present part of living, you know? And so, but I think it's also something that humans, we just, we don't really talk about, and we really struggle with how to process it and how to, you know, how to feel about it. And for me, when I became a mother, it really resurfaced. Um, like my fear transgressor turned an ugly head um, in motherhood. And it like, I think that I had these incredible struggles with the vulnerability of human life in myself and in, in my children specifically. And so for me, um, I actually decided to join Taya specifically and do this because like I, you know, did therapy and did different things. Um, and there were useful, useful tools and all that. But I was like, I need to learn like 100% now. How do I how do I move past this? How do I find my peace with this part of life? That's part of everybody's existence. And so um, that was the big one for, for me in boot camp, as you know. <laughs> but maybe so not everyone 14 knows. modules into 17, how are you doing? Um, it's remarkable. It's remarkable. So I think back to when I do think back to um, where I was in the beginning, you know, I was just somebody that was quite literally almost obsessive thinking about the demise of my loved ones. <laughs> like, I, like what a way to live, you know? Like I, I couldn't not think about it because not thinking about it made me fixate on it more. And, and it built more anxiety and it built more fear because I was like, you know, I do believe in the power of manifestation. And I was like, my energy is all going to the wrong place that 
is not what I want. And then that built me almost like it was almost obsessive compulsive. Like you just kept, I kept going in. Well, yeah, you and, create a momentum with a vibration and you, you sort of keep feeding it. And that's, yeah. what, that's what that is. Sure. Yeah. And so for me, the boot camp journey was like, I really had to, I really had to come to peace with like my own version of like the existence of conscious energy and like what I had, I had to find a way that I could be at peace with the fact that like people are going to die and like some of them are going to be our loved ones. And eventually it's at some point it's going to be us. And that's just what it is. And um, it was incredible because when I turned around and really, instead of running away from like these thoughts, when I turned around and I started digging into them, like, why, why is this here for me? What am I really afraid of? Like, what is, why is this a fear? And like, just asking those questions more and more and diving in and diving in and, and using like the assistance and support of everybody in boot camp and source and anything, any energy, anything you can pull in my family, like just bringing it all together to try and be like strong enough to turn and look. Um, and as David knows, like one of my real big breakthroughs <laughs> came in a meeting <laughs> when we were all like having our one of our two weekly check ins and and it was just like hit me. I just started crying and I was like, it's just really hard. And as soon as we got off that call, I was able to turn and really look um, and be able to be like, I'm OK, like and this is OK, like this is just an experience. and whatever path like our life takes us on is the path it takes us on. And, you know, we have vibrational control of that, but at the same time, you know, we have to be at peace and find the appreciation in all of the experiences that we have. So when you really like, <clears throat> when you really get there, like when you really find a way to stop fighting and accept and then understand and then appreciate it, it, it really does release you. It's really, it's just really special. Very nice. And you, you've done a lot of, of, of healing work as far as your, your, your past stuff. And we don't have to get too deep into that. And, and all of you that are watching, if you good to see you and good morning to whoever that is, we don't always see everybody's name on here. Uh, if you're not registered in StreamYard, it just says Facebook user. So good morning, Facebook user. <laughs> uh, but, um, if you have questions about uh, mm -hmm. the detuning process of fear, we can dive into those. So type in questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're just joining us, Kate is uh, about three quarters of the way through Taya Bootcamp. Uh, this is Taya Talk. This is a new show that I'm doing now on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Pacific. And we are exploring the Taya practice because the Taya practice is not just for people in bootcamp. I've said that all along. You know, mm -hmm. we teach the Taya practice to everybody all the time. Boot camp is for people that want to dive in and, and, and make this their way of life. And it's very effective, but we do want to share these tools. And, and what I love about the boot camp community is that everybody that's in there wants to share these tools. Nobody is saying, I paid all this money to be in boot camp, but I want to keep this information. You know? It's kind of like, it's not working if you're thinking that way, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're missing something in your, in your Taya practice. So it's, I love that we have such an open community of people that want to come mm -hmm. and share and share this with everybody and share their stories and their tools and things like that. So you had the breakthrough, but the, the thing about the Taya practices, it's a combination of things that we do. And this combination of things has proven to be effective in shifting vibration. The, the one tool thing, you know, doesn't really work. It's sort of like, you gotta do this and you gotta do this, and you gotta do this, and you gotta do this, but you can learn to do all those things at the same time. And if you want to learn all those things, we do have a masterclass that teaches you all of those things. And we don't have to get that deep into all of that. You know, that took two hours the last time we did it. Uh, the replay has been edited to 90 minutes though. So you can take the 90 minute masterclass and we'll post a link to the masterclass here in the chat, but you can take the 90 minute masterclass and learn all about it. But we really want to kind of get into detuning fear. And, and Kate has been a superstar of detuning fear and her boot camp experience. So was there a, a single thing that really clinched it for you as far as, ah, you know, I know you had your breakthrough moment in the, in the group mm -hmm. that you said, but an internal a process or a tool that you can um, Really, I think it was being in the boot camp environment finally made me brave enough to stop running away, you know? 
like you said, you give away a lot of, a lot of all of really the tire practice is given away. And I had, I had started exploring that back in August and I had seen just already just huge benefits to it. And then it was one of the master classes I watched and I heard you guys talking about how the boot camp was a place for people also, not just who wanted to learn to manifest whatever they wanted, but a place for people who wanted to learn how to live in joy. And it just resonated because I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Like a hundred percent. That's what I more than anything. And so um, I, I think that when you put the intention out there and you start taking the steps on anything, that's really probably the first <laughs> biggest part. Um, and then just having the support of other people that had gone through things that everyone's, you know, everyone's got their own level of struggle, but that I perspectively could be like, well, that was much worse, you know, and seeing how they came out. It let me trust also that like, if I did this work and I, I really was brave enough to take these steps and to, turn that mirror back around and look at look at myself and look at these, you know, people call it the shadows, their shadow sides and see like what's in this darkness. You didn't actually see as much darkness as you perceived was there. You know, that was my narrative of of fear. And that was what was keeping me in it. And I had to realize fear itself was its own like its own transgressor. It wasn't just like death was a transgressor, but fear itself had become something I had to work on detuning because I was like putting so much energy into being in fear and putting so much emphasis on that, that I think that was also a really big turning point was learning like, hang on. It's not just things that I'm afraid of that have happened that are creating this pattern I'm living in. It's that I'm so obsessed about these fearful thoughts and these fear thoughts in this fear space that I'm giving it all this power. What it, What is it really doing there? And how is it, how does it serve me? And then, you know, Ty kind of taught me how to do that, how to look and say like, how is fear giving me something positive? And I was like, man, it's really showing me how much I care about these mm -hmm. things. It's it's showing me how to prepare and prevent things. It's, it's a warning system for me. Um, and I was able to break it down into different layers of like, these are the different ways this serves me as a human. And that isn't a bad thing, you know? Yeah, well, that's detuning, right? You sort of come yeah. around to making it less of a, a monster and make peace with it and you know, sit and have a cup of coffee with the monster and start chatting you realize okay you know you're, you're here for a reason and i created mm -hmm. you and that's the most empowering thing is mm -hmm. the i created you thing you know and, and people that just discover our teachings sometimes will say well gosh you know you're you're blaming the victim well it's not about blaming anyone it's never about fault mm -hmm. it's always about claiming ownership of everything so that you do have the power to transmute what is negative to what is something positive. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful. And we're not all in the same, because we're taught, we're taught to think like victims. We're taught fear, certainly. You know, I was uh, looking through, um, there was some advertisement thing that I was looking through the day and I was kind of interested in the product. And gosh, they were really hammering with fear. You know, it's sort of like, if you don't buy this product, you're going to die. <laughs> and it's just funny how marketers do that. Yeah, you know, so tap into that fear emotion. And, yeah. and I have people in my business, not right now, but I've had people in the past that worked with me in marketing that really wanted to do that. You know, you need to get on your Facebook live and you need to just dive into their pain and, you know, all this stuff. And I want to you know, acknowledge pain, but I never want to create a sense of fear in that if you don't look, if you don't learn Taya, your life is going to be crap. You know, I will never do that because I, I think that humanity just runs on fear. And my mission is to detune fear and judgment systematically in our lives. I want to teach that to everyone, detuning fear and judgment, because when you do that, and then you sort of wrap your arms around everything in your, your vibrational field as your creation, then you have so much power to change these things and no longer live. That chandelier looks like a hat on your head. It's perfect right now. <laughs> that is a cool chandelier. I really oh, wow. like The guy that built the house built it. That's very cool. Isn't it's very cool? unique. It's very, very cool. I just, sorry, a little wow. ADD moment there for David. Um, so the, the, the idea of claiming ownership and, and being able to transmute energy is something we're told we can't do. You know, we're victims. This happened to us. It wasn't our fault. Uh, you know, it's beyond our control. You know, we're sick or whatever it is that we're told that kind of steals our power, robs us of our power. Yeah. 
And then we see people get into this practice, especially in the boot camp scenario, because we're so close knit as we go through this. Um, you, you just see it happening to, to, you know, we have people all over the world in there working the same way on the same things through their own journey, for sure. Mm -hmm. but watching this unfolding of vibrational flow, including the nasty stuff. Like you said, the, the, the shadow, your sh shadow self, that's, mm -hmm. I've never done that kind of work with anyone else. This was all stuff from the stream. So we don't always use the same terminology, but it all boils down to the same thing that, that, that the ego creates evil and the ego creates all of our, our negative uh, aspects of our lives is actually a creation of our ego consciousness and separation from source. And those creations that we label evil, if we just stop there, then there's no change. There's no solution. There's no evolving from that. But when you dive into that stuff and face your worst fears emotionally, yeah. then you're a lot less likely to need to face them you know, physically anytime soon. And certainly if you do, you're going to be equipped with the toolkit to handle it very differently if something like that does transpire. And again, we work with people that have, have experienced the worst of the worst, and, and we know that. And I use them as examples because they're so damn inspiring. Somebody that, you know, that loses a child or something of that mm -hmm. nature. You know, there's some of those people in the boot camp community and they're very inspiring. Someone that can take that experience and find, I always use the word appreciation, meaning under deep understanding of it, not, oh my gosh, I'm glad that happened. Mm -hmm. But that appreciation is the best word to really get, dig into how starkly different it is from what we're taught to feel. And, and in that appreciation, the transgressor energy dissipates. It changes it on every topic. So every time I have transgressor energy pop up, that's that's my go-to now with the Taya practice is how do I find appreciation for this? I need to find appreciation for it. How did it serve me? And boom, I'm right back up in source connection. And then it's, it's a totally different uh, perspective up there. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. You know, it's funny. I, I think I was on Facebook yesterday and I saw this this post from somebody I knew and they they posted like people who have experienced trauma are held back in life because that time that they were in the throes of their trauma, they weren't able to get ahead. And I was like, that is the worst message. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you're stuck. You know, you're it's stuck like, in that forever. That's gonna forever define who so you are. Yeah. It was so sad. And the first person that commented was like, I'm 60 years and I feel this hundred percent. And I was like, or or you could learn how to turn this into a slingshot that propels you forward and that you're invincible because you've already lived through the worst. So nothing's yeah. impossible. The the bad impossible already happened. Why don't you let the good impossible happen too? Like you know, it, it really, it's so much about your perspective. And when you can, when you can come to the place where you stop running away from what you're really feeling, because these things, they, they really do get in the way of living in joy and you can turn around and stop running away from them and say, all right, it's time. I'm going to deal with you. <laughs> you got to get off my back. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, yeah, well, that, 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 uh, that cloak of victimhood, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's comforting for a minute. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. and comforting for a minute, but yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of, uh, you know, saddens me to hear that somebody would be at 60 mm -hmm. having, and I, I mean, we've had that, you know, we've had people come into to boot camp in their seventies that have lived a lifetime in that victim vibration. And of course, to get into boot camp, you've got to be ready to accept and transmute that stuff or boot camp is not for you if you're in that space. But it really is about going beyond fault and blame and, and all of that 3D stuff mm -hmm. because it doesn't serve us. You know, it soothes for a minute, but then it holds us in that space. And if we hold ourselves in that space vibrationally, we do manifest things of that nature. We see it showing up over and over and over again. Yeah. And you, see, it's sometimes it's easier to see it in other people than in yourself, myself included. I'm pretty critical of myself these days. I, I hold myself to a very high standard with the tire practice. And if I fall out of alignment, the universe just sends me instant notification. Mm -hmm. that I'm not where I want to be. And it's very uncomfortable. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I have the tools, thankfully, to get myself out of that space. But accepting that life is not about perfection. 
And that's one of the things I really like to talk about in the Taya practice too, that you're not going to get in and learn this practice and suddenly you're going to be living the Instagram life, you know, where everything is beautiful and perfect and you've got the best body and the, the hottest partner and the biggest house and the fanciest yacht and the fleet of cars and everything is just champagne. But you're too young to remember this, this guy used to be on TV in the 80s, uh, champagne wishes and caviar dreams. <laughs> I thought it was so ridiculous. <laughs> so, you know, it's not that. It's not that. Mm -hmm. it, life is not supposed to be perfect. Yeah, and, and accepting the perfection of imperfection is a big part of this. But it's easy to hear that and say, well, gosh, then why bother? Well, why bother is that you find joy in the imperfection and you find clarity in the imperfection. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love leading people to with the practice. You know, they, you, you manifest your own path for sure. But I think the tools give a framework for people to find that. And it's extremely satisfying work. So much more satisfying than selling furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, so much more so. So uh, Deborah is on. Hi, Deborah. Deborah was on last week. So if you haven't seen Deborah's Deborah. episode of Taya Talk, you can catch her. Uh, the replay is everywhere you're watching us right now. You can scroll back and catch Deborah Wilson's replay after this. Uh, <laughs> here and now that Deborah's on, and uh, Lisa Dan, hi. I you're on YouTube, so I can see you on YouTube. It's a Facebook thing where if you don't register on Facebook your name doesn't pop up on here in the comments. So we just you know, type in who you are sometimes if you haven't registered, but you all get to watch it and comment. And uh, if you have questions about detuning, you have questions for Kate, uh, type them in, you know, we're happy to address anything, but I'm going to move to a different topic now. Oh, we're just going to dive in. We're just going to dive into all the, the controversial stuff. So, so <laughs> Deborah posted, uh, I'm going to do a whole podcast about this. Deborah posted um, last week about, spending money on spirituality. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure back in like August or September, I went on the tire practice page and waved my finger at you about this, actually. So I, I don't think you, I, I won't know if you remember or not, but you posted something and you were like, you know, how would people feel about paying like, and it was, you know, a large amount of money for something that you could have anything that you wanted, like that you could. And I was like, you know, why would you, why would you set the bar to entry so high was my comment at the time. And I was like, I, I said that it felt exclusive um, and that it was excluding of people who may want to join, but it was going to limit your message because you weren't. Well, that, I thought I blocked you when you, I'm just totally <laughs> kidding. <laughs> you did. I, I am you. totally kidding. I would not block somebody. <laughs> I'm just I kidding. I don't think I've ever blocked anybody from the group. So anyway, unless yeah. trying to, to sell stuff in the group. That but that happen. was, I mean, so for me, I think actually coming around and being like, oh my, I'm going to do this. I had, I had kind of to eat a little bit of a slice of humble pie a little bit because I was like, damn, like I, I called him out on like the price of this, but here I am going, what do I really want? And like, do I really believe that it's out of reach for me? Or is that a story that I'm telling myself? Like, what am I really doing here? And um, so I was definitely one of those people that was like, in the beginning, I was like, no, no. Like that's, it's just not, I was like, I, I totally wasn't a, a knower on that. And then I kept up, I just stayed around and I kept watching and I kept seeing the transformations and hearing people's changes. And then, then I thought about it and just in terms of myself and what was right for me. And I was like, man, you know, I'm somebody that has gone to therapy. I'm somebody that has tried all kinds of different ways to learn how to process this and get out of this fear cycle and trauma cycle and anxiety cycle. And finally, I was just like, if this works, then it's worth it. And if it doesn't, then, you know, I lost some money, but I gained an education and I spent a lot more on college, a lot more. <laughs> so I kind of just approached it from that, that avenue. And I was like, you know, it, if I lose like there, even the therapy I've done over the years, I'm like, there were always nuggets of gold in there that were helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, I never, I, I didn't set the expectation. I didn't know, actually. I won't say I, I didn't set any expectation, I should say. I just figured I've been asking for this 
I've been putting it out there that I wanted to change as part of living. I didn't want to live in this space the way that I was. I wanted to transform it and be in more joy, be fully present, be more happy. Um, and so I was like, I'm going to give it a shot. And I'm so happy I did. <laughs> and I don't mean to sound well, I'm, I'm glad you did too, because you're a joy to have in uh, boot camp. And, and I hey. thank you for doing this. Thank you for taking time out of your day, because you're not, no, no boot camper is required to do any of this stuff. No boot camper is required to do a testimonial, a live with me, a podcast. Uh, we do not require that. We're, we're really specific about that. It's all volunteer stuff. I would never want to, you know, force somebody. Somebody asked me that not too long ago when they were coming into boot camp. Am I required? I'm like, no, of course not. You know, what what would be the vibration of making you? <laughs> all right, you're you're spending money on this. We're teaching you. You're transforming your life. I know. By the way, you you are required by contract to give us a testimonial. That wouldn't be a very good testimonial, would it? Oh yeah, boot camp was great. Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> See that testimonial. So. <laughs> <laughs> so um, to to get into the the whole money thing, um, you know, when I first started channeling, um, I had a lot of reverence for it, and I still do. And I, I thought it was this profound message for the world that I kept to myself for you know forty five plus years. And when I was really, I, I got into this vibrational space where I couldn't keep it to myself anymore. There, I just couldn't not share it. And it was just oozing out of me. And it was oozing out of me in a very, very, very conservative corporate environment. Mm. Where, by conservative, I mean not politically necessarily, just conservative, you just very formal corporate environment where the fact that I had a beard was controversial. And then the last year I quit wearing a tie, which was very controversial. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this wasn't that long ago either. It was in the 50s. So, the, uh, the the oozing out of me, I, I knew that I wanted to share it, but there would be a conflict with me stepping out and sharing it the way that I do and being having the executive type of career that I had. It just would have ended that. And I needed to make peace with that. Mm. So I quit the job and had no idea how I was going to support myself. I shared in my first book, you know, I was still living in the $6,000 a month apartment and driving the $1,200 a month Audi at the time. So I had, you know, expenses and, 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 and uh, I had some money saved, but not a ton. And when I jumped out of the airplane, I didn't have a plan. I had an unpublished book and a podcast that cost me money every month to put up. You know, it wasn't big enough to have advertising and, and uh, I've kind of moved back away from having advertisers on it anyway at this point. So there was no monetization of anything. It was costing me money to do this. And I was on Instagram all the time chatting with people. Uh, in fact, my Instagram following grew quite a bit because I was so engaged on Instagram. And I'll never forget Christmas Eve that first year, I think it was 2017. Uh, there were suicidal people on Instagram talking to me. Wow. And it was sort of like, you know, holy shit, you know, this is very different than what I've been doing for the last, you know, 25 years of, of my career. And I wanted to give and give and give and give and give. And this is what I'm getting. And this is, you know, and so shortly after leaving my job, I met someone that that taught, uh, quote unquote, spiritual entrepreneurs. I'd never heard that before. I thought it sounded kind of like an oxymoron, right? <laughs> I judge it the same way. Like, spiritual entrepreneurs. What is that? Is that like I'm going to run a mega church? You know, and there is a lot of judgment around re religions and money and spirituality mm -hmm. and money. Um, you know, I've been to the Vatican. <laughs> I've seen what that's all about. I've seen the gold statues and the beautiful, you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so there, there is certainly a lot of judgment around the topic because spirituality is, is not a thing that you could package and sell. You know, spirituality is really our connection to the energetic realm. I, I, I don't get too deep into a lot of mainstream spiritual stuff. Uh, I really trust the stream's teachings and we've created the Taya practice based on the stream's teachings. And it's not that there's anything wrong with any of it. And what I love about the stream is that there's there's no judgment of any path, any religion, any spiritual teaching, any practice. Uh, it all serves because everything has the power that we give to it. But the idea of monetizing in the beginning turned me off. Mm. Because I talked to this person who was this coach, you know, who I was told was going to, to help me set up some sort of a business. I honestly thought I'm going to publish books. My books are going to be bestsellers and I'm going to do, you know, workshops like, like Abraham does. And that's how I'm going to make money. Well, of course it took Abraham 30 years to get to where they are, you know, making money the way that they do. So, you know, I had to dip into a bit of 3d reality and think, okay, you know, there does need to be a financial into this. And why am I judging this so harshly? 
because this person was telling me you need to do a course. And I'm like, I'm not going to teach a course. I'm going to do workshops and I'm going to have a best selling book. Um, and then I stepped away and I meditated and I got really clear that the course, my, my intention was to go deeper into teaching uh, universal law in a way that would shift the vibration, the consciousness of humanity, all that are aligned with it, not all of humanity, mm -hmm. but all that are aligned with it. And I realized that a course is how you do that. I haven't seen anything as transformative as boot camp, especially not within these teachings. So I got in and, and she was, you know, put setting a price that you should do your course for this. And I was really guided to charge even more mm. to make it a more expensive, bigger, more robust experience. And it turned into that. And I did charge more and I ended up, selling more courses than anyone that that coach had ever worked with before at that point, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because people listen to the podcast. They like the stream. They got in line. They wanted to do it. They jumped in. They co-created the practice with me and the rest is history. You know, one, one of those two people still works with me, you know, to this day, and she's a coach at bootcamp, Stacy. Mm -hmm. So the, the charging for the not charging for, we're not charging for spirituality and we're not even charging for Taya. I teach yeah. Taya, like I said, we teach Taya everywhere for free. Mm -hmm. but getting into the coaching program is something that is an investment. Yeah. And yeah. It's, an, it's an investment that I know everybody can manifest. There's a lot of work um, on different levels. This is, I, I mean, so I, I found that just listening to your podcast manifestation started happening for me just through listening to the podcast early episodes. You, you, you did teach a lot of it. Um, so, I mean, some people maybe have luck with that. I joined when I did because I couldn't, I couldn't change my way of thinking. And I knew that the investment I was making was one to fulfill myself with more happiness and be in a, in a state of joy and to release like specifically a lot of the, that baggage of like the fear baggage, anxiety baggage, and much more that surfaced later. <laughs> so like, um, you know, you really do give, you give everybody the tools. So if they are, you know, if they're a self-starter and they're able to do it, it's there. You know, the boot camp is for people, I think, that want that handholding or want just a lot more accountability or one-on-one -on -one or, in the, or, you know, sometimes it's just like you're ready to, like me, you were ready for something different and you were fed up and you're like, I've been asking for an opportunity to, to come. And here I am looking at something and stubbornly being like, no. No, I already naysayed this. I can't do it. And then I was like, okay, just do it. Like, Until this broadcast, I never knew that we that you had that. Um, I, how did I react to that? You were really good about it. You were just like, well, this is, I charge what I charge because it's super interactive. Um, I want people to be invested in it because if they're not, they don't do it and it doesn't work. And so, and there's, a, you're like, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and there's a lot of group time and, you know, it's not, it's not like you just pay for something and you download it and you're done. Like it, you're not, you don't go away. <laughs> Even if sometimes I wished you had. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, again, in, in three years time and, and my impatient self, and I was talking to somebody the other day that was involved you know, early on in the business, uh, you know, it seemed like it was taking forever. But now it's, it's only been three years and we've created something mm -hmm. that's so transformative and so effective. And we really know how to, to teach it to people. Yeah. So the, the, there's no failing in boot camp. The only people that fail at boot camp are the ones that quit. You yeah. know, they, they move away from it for whatever reason. And I have very few that have done that. In fact, out of over 100 graduates, uh, you know, less than, than, than 10 have just kind of drifted away and not come back to the material at some point. So we know how to successfully move people through it and graduate you as long as you're willing to put the work in. The, the investment also is part of that commitment yes. because if you've got skin in the game, because I put people in scholarship on scholarship in the beginning and they didn't finish. Oh, interesting. Um, well, it's, it's, it's a tough boot camp. It is. You are changing your vibration. <laughs> if that were easy, with the 10 million law of attraction books that are on the market, everyone would be living this amazing, abundant life if it were, you know, an easy thing to change mm -hmm. your vibration. 
That's why I don't even talk about law of attraction that much because it's really just one little component of the universal process of creation. There's all these other things that go into that. Mm -hmm. If you can certainly manifest things that you want and manifest more joy and clarity and ultimately anything, but getting deep into the idea of the perfection of imperfection and making peace with being human and making peace with your vibrational flow and making peace with your, your ultimate transition out of humanity and those that of your loved ones. That yeah. is what I is all about. Making peace with your past. Actually appreciate mm -hmm. your past. All of it. You know, that that's that's what we're doing in, in, in boot camp and in the tire practice ultimately. And it's not an easy thing to get through. That's why we do that's why we do it take at least 12 weeks so that you're moving through your own natural vibrational flow and some of that is up and some of it's down. And there are times that you're all going to want to walk away from it. And I can't make you do it. Mm -hmm. I can charge you a whole lot of money and make you keep coming back. To it. <laughs> well, I do think that helps because when you, when you pay for it, you definitely have this, like, I am being accountable to that. And well, you, you give know, more power. I find that in humanity, you know, across humanity, we give more power to things. We that value we, it differently. We invest in. And also, mm -hmm. you know, somebody said something once. It wasn't uh, the stream. It was somebody else that I was talking to. And, and they had this, because I, I, the stream never uses this term, they. But somebody said, you know, they, uh, the, the powers that be, um, have demonized spiritual teachers from charging hmm. to hold them back. I don't know if that's true. I don't necessarily feel that. But it's an interesting perspective that, you know, why should spiritual teachers not charge and why should you not pay for this that's so important when you pay your doctor, you pay your dentist, you pay your car insurance, you pay your mortgage, you pay your electricity, mm -hmm. all of these things. Again, you're not paying for spirituality. You're, you're paying for tools and a set of teachings that serve you on a higher level if you give them power. Mm -hmm. And you choose what you pay for and what you invest in, certainly. But the, the the wrapping my mind around the idea of charging was something I made peace with early on, and I continue to be at peace with it. In fact, yeah. we I channel live a lot, uh, mm -hmm. less now, but I used to channel every single week live. And when we did the summit, were you in the summit? Did you do the summit? No, no, so, Saturday, single parenting. Oh, day. that's right. That's right. <laughs> so when we did the summit a few weeks ago, the summit, everybody paid. It was ninety seven bucks to come on for four hours. Um, you know, everybody that was in there paid for it. And it was such an incredible vibration. Mm. I, I can't even explain those of you, if any of you were on uh, the summit uh, live, you can type in your experience. It was incredible. And we have a little trailer that we've put up of it at the end. You just see the reaction of everybody that was in there. And it was like that four hours went by in about half an hour. Cool. <clears throat> it was just this incredible experience. And I think everyone, you know, I'm, putting aside this time, I'm setting aside four hours of my Saturday. I'm investing money to be there. I'm going to be in it. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to be interactive. I'm going to ask questions. It's not like a Facebook live where you might just kind of, you know, pop in, ask a couple of questions. Maybe your question gets read or it doesn't and you pop out. That collective energy of that interaction was very powerful. And it, early on when I started going to uh, Abraham workshops um, back in the day, uh, somebody would, you know, everyone saw criticize, you know, Abraham for charging, I think like two fifty for a workshop, which to me is nothing, <laughs> you know, compared to what some, some of these seminars, you know, like a thousand dollars for the day. Um, but I, before Abraham even answered that knowing dropped into my mind from the stream that that creates the high vibration of that event. Mm -hmm. Everyone that's there is invested in being there and it's meaningful to mm -hmm. them. They took, they went to trouble to be there and they're giving it power. And that's why mm -hmm. the things are so amazing. And that's yeah. what I want for the summits. So, yeah, there's definitely something to be said for investing in yourself, like with resources, you know, whether it's financial, it's money resources or it's energy resources or it's time resources. Like, you know, we as a society are very sometimes, uh, greedy with our resources like we think we need it all all the time whatever it is and i'm not trying to say you're greedy if you choose not to invest in tire that's not what i mean yeah, um yeah. but it is it is like we just you know i know i struggle with spending any resources on myself like and maybe that's that's just the type of personality i am and so i i think that like 
there's probably a lot of people out there that are like me where it's just hard to justify with a family. Like, how do I, you know, how do I justify this? And I, I will add that like, you know, I set the intention to manifest back the money before boot camp was over. And last week we just got handed a check for it out of nowhere. And it was yeah, like it was almost the thing about, right? because I was like, Oh yeah, I did set that intention. And <laughs> here it is, you know, and it's like, you know, once you stop viewing these resources as uh, limited, a lot of things change, you know, when you really, I'm still working on specifically the time one, as we know. Yes. Yeah. And that is something, <laughs> and, and I'm glad you got your session coming up with Stacy because I think that's yes. something that you're going to, it's going to be your next thing. And it's, you're going to, I think it is too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and, you know, the, the, just to kind of close on the, uh, move on to a different topic from the money topic. Um, Sometimes people ask why I don't just put a price uh, for a boot camp out and just let people decide if they want to do it or not. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want the price to scare anyone away because I have enrolled people in boot camp that were homeless. Mm -hmm. fact, Nicole Henry was admittedly, she, she shared this, you know, on video. She was homeless when she joined Taya Bootcamp. She's now a Taya Mastery. So she's, she's manifested her way from, she was in the state of being homeless when she got into Thai bootcamp. Mm -hmm. I have man, I have had people manifest that were unemployed. I've had people manifest whose bank accounts were overdrawn and get into Thai bootcamp. It's, I believe in everyone's ability to get into it mm -hmm. and the making peace with the idea of investing money in it is part of it. It's part of it. Because if you're still in that lack mentality, yeah, then you've got some more work to do with our free stuff to, to get to that point, you know. And then we have tie a money mindset too, which we, you know, uh, that, that's available to people if they really want to set that. I, I know Deborah and Anne Marie and a couple of others in bootcamp went through tie a money mindset first, and then they went into tie a bootcamp from tie a money mindset because that that's a, a nice bridge to get into that money mindset and manifest your way in. I always say you can manifest your way in, but you are manifesting your way in and you've got to trust it and believe it and not demonize it because anything that you think is evil or wrong or bad, that's going to be your reality. So boot camp is available to everybody, 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 everybody. And I want, if you want to do it and you believe in your ability to manifest, I want to do the meeting with you. Mm. I want to do that meeting with you. You know, it would be easy for me to kind of pre-qualify and say, well, if you're not going to spend this much money, don't waste my time. Well, I'm not like that. You know, if you're interested in joining Thai bootcamp, I want to talk to you. I want to meet with you. And even if now is not the time, then, you know, at least getting a mindset together and a, and a mental plan together to manifest your way in is, you know, you're, you're able to do that. And once people kind of release that judgment of it, the mm -hmm. floodgates open up and the pathway just is there. Yeah. And, and I know that I've been doing this for three years now and I see that work and this formula that we have works. So, you know, detune your fear. If you're ready to detune your fear and you're ready to, to release any semblance of a victim vibration and claim mm -hmm. of all of it, then do the discovery session. And then from the discovery session, you manifest your way to boot camp. So yeah, that's a good piece. That's a great, that's great that you offered that service that you will talk to people. I, and I do see how if you publish the price, people might think like that's in my budget or that's not in my budget and then just move on from it. And, you know, I think that you're right. Being able to talk to somebody and see the way they are and feel where they're at, it really changes the experience of what if they do come in, even what you can offer them and what you can do with them and how it might be something within reach and they might not know it or, you know, cause you're not, you're not asking, I've never seen you ask anybody to go broke doing this. Like I've never seen that. And nobody. Well, I've told people in the discovery meeting, you know, I've told people no, because I know they're not vibrationally ready. People that had mm -hmm. the money that I knew weren't, it wasn't going to be a good mm -hmm. outcome for them because that's not good for any of us if they're not no. really, you know, vibrationally aligned with the work. And I've told people that the, um, goodbye, that, <laughs> don't you love that? I think uh, that it was actually a compliment. <laughs> it's a little, little troll action there. Um, oh, they were just teasing. They yeah. were trying to tell me I look pretty. Yeah, they were intimidated. They were intimidated. <laughs> So, I mean, between the two of us, why wouldn't they go after me? You know, <laughs> well, it, was, it didn't bother me. I didn't. I didn't take it as anything. Yeah, no. Hi, a person. Why would you care about that? Anyway, 
<laughs> not everybody can even see what we're talking about. It's okay. So <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought on that because your reaction to it was priceless. <laughs> Let's move on from the money topic. I think we, we've uh, covered that enough. I think everybody kind of knows where we stand and all that. So, oh, I was, I was saying I tell people no. So I've told people no based on they're not being vibrationally aligned with the work, whether they had the money or not, it didn't matter because I knew the outcome was they weren't ready for what was going to be offered in it. And I've told people, no, you know, don't not pay your bills to get into this, you know, yeah. because what happens is, is when you, you get into that high vibe, that law of attraction, you know, Oh, I'm aligned with it. I know it's coming. I can feel it. Well, vibrational flow is going to knock you out of that. <laughs> so yeah. if that's not your true uh, vibrational set point on the topic, you get into boot camp, you start stressing about the money that you spent on it, boom, you're going to go down the spiral, you're going to self sabotage boot camp, and then you're going to have to do a lot of work to kind of pull yourself back up out of that. So mm -hmm. you, you, you want to, you know, manifest the resources, uh, however that looks for you, but it's not about getting in and not paying your, your bills to be in boot camp. Boot camp is hard enough without that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, again, like I said, we call it boot camp for a reason. We don't call yeah. it David's flowery rainbows and fairy dust spiritual program. Uh, it's not that, that would be very false advertising. <laughs> I could get a lot more people in probably. Yeah, you could. Good. Could really we mad. Go around the campfire and we talk, we just feel good all the time. <laughs> it's abundance everywhere. That's all it is. No, it's not that. It's Why work, people. Struggling? That's so yeah. odd. <laughs> it's work, but you know, cha changing your vibrational set point, guess what, is work. Mm -hmm. That's why people tend to not change their lives because their lives yeah. stay stuck in this, this pattern. Uh, because yeah. it's a lot of work to disrupt that and, sh and, and, and shift upward. It is, but you can it do is. it. Yeah. 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 Well, and hopefully you watch the, the testimonials and you're inspired by these things. And uh, somebody did make a comment in that whole money thing about, you know, it's the haves and the have nots. I thought, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, it's not that. Everyone's the haves. Everyone is the haves. There's no yeah. have nots. Plus we're, we're teaching it for free. So you are the have one way or the other. So as far as um, the, 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 the big takeaways so far, you're, you're 14 modules into 17. So you're, like I said, you're at least three quarters of the way through a little further than that even. Mm -hmm. uh, other than the detuning of fear, what's another big one for you? Um, I really, it came to light to me how I was always manifesting, um, whether I wanted to or not. And I think that's true for everybody. And that, But when you get conscious of where you are, like energy, am I low and negative or am I high and feeling good? And you start seeing the things happen that parallel where you are, it becomes like really, you really wake up to it. And you're just like, oh my God, you know, I, I David, you know the story. One day I was, took my son for a walk in the park before I had detuned fear. And I live across the street from the state park and he took off on me and I had my, I met a toddler and I had her and I'm trying to wrestle her into her, you know, her stroller and we're in sand and I can't get out of the sand. And by the time I get her over this hump where I couldn't see past, my son is gone. And I had been super deep in the, like, I need to really, I need to deal with like the fear of death here. I hadn't quite, I hadn't released it yet. And I was still really living in that vibration. And like, you know, he was fine and he had just run, most of the way home and came back to look for me, but it was a pretty terrifying, like 10 minutes of, you know, where is my child? And we're in a state park with bunkers from World War II. I mean, there's a lot of hazards that I was still just always aware of and thinking about all the time. And then quite literally later that day, I'd been looking for like a pair of wooden sunglasses and I'm walking and I kick them on the ground they're really specific because I'm allergic to sunglasses. And so I was like, I need to get a pair of wooden sunglasses so I won't have any skin allergy reactions. They weren't your wooden sunglasses. You were shopping no. for wooden sunglasses and no. you actually found them. I wasn't some. even shopping for them. I was just, I was just shopping. And That's it was really literally cool. the same day. And I'm like, I, so it just became so, I, there's so many places where if you, when you tune into it, when it gets on your radar, you see that you really are creating your desires or your fears, whatever they are. And, being in a fear space, I was perpetually keeping myself in a fear space because that's what I was overwhelmingly feeling anxious and fear all the time. And so after releasing that, like scary things aren't happening like that, you know, like I'm going to knock on wood always, but like um, it was really interesting because it just, 
that was a big realization was like, you're never going to not be manifesting things and you're never going to be not drawing experiences and energy to you. And you're never going to control every, everything as all high or all low. But I see so many people I know that I'm like, man, like you're really stuck down. And like, I see that like the people that's like the bad stuff always happens to them again and again and again. And it's like, kind of get it. <laughs> you know, you're like, well, yeah, like I said, it's easier to see it in yeah. other people sometimes than in ourselves. Mm -hmm. because we're, we're with ourselves all the time and it's, it's hard to be so um, objective with that, but you're right. Yeah. And the, um, the, that, that dominant vibration that we create seems so unchangeable. You know, yeah. it seems like we just default back to it over and over and over again until we get the tools together to really change that. But the changing of it is work. And and I don't know how to to change these vibrations without get, getting our hands dirty and doing a little bit of work. And the, the, the idea of shadow work and shadow self, like I said, when I developed this practice for myself, I had no idea that that had a name. Just mm -hmm. like I at one point thought I invented the law of attraction. I didn't know it had a name. That was a long time ago. <laughs> So I was a teenager, <clears throat> but the, um, the, the digging into the fear and facing it and detuning it is very mm -hmm. powerful. And mm -hmm. when it's your dominant vibration, you are going to manifest different scenarios that are going to present to you exactly what you need to detune. Yeah. And that's the magic of the universal process of creation. It's actually a brilliant warning system, if you will, almost that, Hey, this is what you're, you know, this is where you're, you're heading here with this and here's another example of it for you and here's another example of it for you and here's yet another until you finally face it find appreciation for it detune the fear of it and then that that heavy negative vibration of it dissipates mm -hmm. it's it's magical when that starts to happen mm -hmm. i think deborah deborah wilson called it alchemy i love that there's alchemy yeah. in this practice yeah. i'm gonna use that forever now i love that i really really love it's that. a good term for it yeah, yeah. Well, I like that you pointed out too that you know sometimes I'll see you know on social media somebody will say you know learn how to manifest. Well, we don't have to learn how to manifest. We we are okay. manifesting yeah. all the time. Everything is just this unfolding of our vibrational alignment mm -hmm. all the time. So it's it's more about learning to be more intentional with your manifestations mm -hmm. until you sort of get ahead of that, and then really letting go of that. Even that's sort of the training wheels of it, and then mm -hmm. letting go of that, and really just keeping your vibe up as your work. And yeah. letting the universe just deliver the best possible outcome. I love that. That's my intention. Best possible outcome. Bring it on, whatever it is. Yeah. That was a big one to learn too, was allowing. Cause I'm a hammer and I always like, I'm like, I can take on anything and like nothing is gonna stop me. And I will just keep going until I get this and I get there and whatever it is I'm trying to get. And the confidence is good. Mm -hmm. But the tenacity is good. Hammer, That's right. Tenacity is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, but I also am like, mm, what's that really coming from? That's coming from anxiety <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and, and an effort to control. And I'm pushing because I'm not trusting. And that's all. That's not like the vibe I want to be in either. So for me, a big realization was that like this practice I was also in, not just to release fear um, and anxiety and be in more joy, but to step back and focus on allowing and trusting and just like really relinquishing control of the need to control everything still working on it, but <laughs> I'm not done yet. You know, <laughs> well, you know, the, the thing about boot camp is you, you get into boot camp to learn the practice and then you continue to do the practice for the rest of your life. Uh, we're having a reunion coming up uh, this month for boot camp graduates. And I'm reaching out to people I haven't talked to in a couple of years. Uh, and especially people that weren't in our fall reunion, and, you know, just checking in with them. And I'm just so thrilled to see over and over again. Yes, I'm still doing the practice, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, even though I'm not active in the group or on social media like I used to be. A lot of people have just exited Facebook and social media. <clears throat> so, and I understand why. Yeah, I, I do <laughs> too. I, yeah, we'll only use it really for our, our stuff because it's just, mm -hmm. it's still a great platform to get together and be together, you know, globally the way that we are in, in, in mediums like this. So uh, that the, in that aspect, in that respect, it's a good tool, but you know, just getting on and scrolling through and seeing what everybody's doing, you know, mm -hmm. that doesn't do much for me. And that news feed they always have up there, that yeah. grabbing you know, news feed, I try to, I wish I could just totally shut that off. That would be great. 
<laughs> yeah. I guess it's a big money maker, so it's probably not going to go away. So um, anything else as we wrap up that you want to share? Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, and I, I guess if any, I guess I would just say if anybody does sign up, don't, don't give up on yourself if you hit hard spots in boot camp because it is such an integrated part of the experience is those like those, those roadblocks, like they're there. And when you get to the other side of them, you really like, that's these major transformations of your entire energy and the way you're living and the way you're seeing life on the other side of them. Um, but they can be really big and really intimidating, <laughs> but that's yeah, okay. But, yeah. And that's, that's, that's the work though. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you're, you know, I'm very upfront. I'm glad that everybody's very upfront that you get into boot camp, and it is a boot camp. It is work. Mm -hmm. You're doing work to change your default vibration and it takes some mm -hmm. effort. But the, if you think about it, you know, you've got a lifetime of creating this vibrational set point and whatever your life is, is your vibrational set point. You, the, mm -hmm. Look around you, you look at your bank account, your job, your family, your relationships, your health, yeah. all of that stuff. That is your vibrational set point. So if there's aspects of that you want to change, and I think there always is because we're expansive beings, we always want to expand in some way. And, and that's different for everybody. That's why I always say abundance is, is your version of abundance. It doesn't mean, you know, trust your abundance and, and have lots of money uh, only or trust your abundance and have, you know, uh, whatever experience you want. It, you know, it is your version of, of happiness, your vo version of joy. And changing your vibrational set point is something that takes a little bit of effort. But you get into something in a few weeks, change a lifetime of limiting beliefs. And when you all get down on yourselves in this process, you know, as impatient as I am, I have to remind all of you of that sometimes, you know, that, hey, you, you're making big changes in your life that are going to last for the rest of your life in a matter of weeks, if not a couple of months. And, you know, the, the don't beat yourselves up. And one of the things people do when they get into law of attraction teachings is when they are in low vibration and they're beating themselves up. Then they start beating themselves up for beating themselves up because they realize, oh my gosh, I'm in low vibration. I'm attracting things I don't want. I can't be down here. This is terrible. It's awful. I can't be here. This is terrible. It's the worst thing ever. What are you doing? You're just fueling that. You know, it really is just, I'm DTS. It's okay that I'm DTS. We all go DTS. Vibrational flow is a thing that we're all aware of. That's why our emotions are on this constant little journey, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's a reflection of our vibration. But vibrational flow serves a purpose. And when you really understand that purpose and appreciate it, then everything's different because the, the magic of Taya is you learn to trust when you're down. You may not enjoy being down. It may not feel good. You may not even remember what it was like to be up, but you can at least go down there and trust. This is DTS. I'm a little DTS. I know I need to stop and breathe and move myself out of this in ease because the hammering just doesn't work. No, no. It doesn't. But I think and that's one of the greatest like gifts of Taya is that you really start to recognize where you are. Like, what am I feeling? Am I feeling good? Am I feeling not good? Like what? And then why? Because if you you know, we all spend our lives on autopilot. And so you, usually something kind of has to happen to shake you out of it. Um, but I'm also like, you don't have to wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> like if if you're not in like living in the in, in joy you want to be like then that could be enough reason but i i feel like i you know i was a big not gonna get in i was like no this is this feels icky to be for some reason I, and then and then i had to kind of like say all right like i was wrong this actually feels like it might be what i needed and um i'm really glad i did <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You've done fantastic. So and you still have more modules to go and graduation and then an actual testimonial if you want to do it. No <laughs> obligation. All right. I'll do You've that. done a great one already here and we do appreciate it. <laughs> but really, you know, what I want to do is is, is, is come on here and, and have everyone share their experience and have everyone share the tools uh, and the teachings, because again, I want everybody to learn this stuff, whether no matter whether they're ready for boot camp or not. I really do want everybody to learn this. So it's so transformative. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, a lot of fun always. And uh, first, first of many appearances. I'm just kidding. It's, <laughs> uh, 
I do want to thank the audience for uh, participating. A lot of you uh, were, were on today and a lot of you mm -hmm. stayed on the end. So thank you so much uh, for joining. Uh, we will post the link to the masterclass in the chat here. So wherever you're watching this, you can uh, hop on that link. You need to set aside 90 minutes of your precious time to do this masterclass. But when you do, you learn all about the tire practice. It's, it, yeah, it cool. tells you everything that you need to know about it. Uh, and then if you're ready for boot camp, you can always book a discovery meeting with us. Just post in the chat that you're interested in that. We'll send you a link to do that. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again, Kate. Thank you. Bye. Bye.